in England. Royce is going into the huddle there. That last moment of concentration, getting everything ready. They've rehearsed for this day. They did so well against Italy. Nobody could have asked more of them, but that was Italy. This is the old ones. This is the real test. Clive Woodward. And if he looks a little apprehensive, well he might. And Johnny Wilkinson, still only 20 years old, the kicker. Big deep kick to Tana Umanga. Mertens and gathered in by Perry it was Maxwell flying in back chip and chase not forward by the All Blacks England got to then wide out oh and that's a great touch right in the corner bouncing perfectly and England now have the All Blacks under pressure it will of course be an All Black throw in Gus Scott's back, great chip by him, into the corner, really wanted the ball to stay in, he just bounced in field. And to Oliver, the hooker with the throw, can England steal one? No they can't. Back it comes to Marshall. He finds a good touch from that angle. He's made all of uh, 30 meters. He's a good touch. He had no angle at all. Just in Marshall. England forward pack though. New Zealand trying to drive them back. Got nowhere. England now with their first throw. Cockrell was word perfect against Italy. Found his man every time. Starts off by finding Grukov. The little slide back, running. Straight at Bronco. Delalio. Straight through the middle. Wilkinson. Gus Scott. In goes the drive. England have it again. Johnson, the skipper. Couldn't quite get the power. He wanted Wilkinson. He's putting up the bomb. Gus Scott's underneath it. But beautifully taken there by Robin Brook. Richard Hill tearing in, trying to get uh, a hand on the ball. Great kick, though, and a touch on the England 10-metre line. What a start to the game we've got here. Great skill by both sides. Good kick by Johnny Wilkinson, put it up, hanging high. And great skill by Robin Brooks, second row, good hands. And Mertens, he got them clear. Wilkinson. He started well. There's Big Martin Johnson winning his 50th cap today. Rukov. It's not straight. First mistake by Cockerell. A wasted ball and the All Blacks have the scrum. First mistake of the game really, John. It's an important one. There's the pack weights. England outweighing the All Blacks just about. the very experienced Craig Dowd on the tight head winning his 50th cap today oh and Umaga's free through the middle it was too easy but in fact it was too easy it was an obstruction and Peter Marshall pulling them back the All Blacks working an obstructed move there quite right the referee they can see it 12 in front of the runner it's offside, Peter Marshall got it. Yeah, Yeremia quite clearly obstructing the, uh, the tackles on that occasion. Wilkinson finds touch and England back down almost to the All Blacks 22. And 
Yes, and they've been there right from the start, apart from one relieving kick from Mertens at the moment. It's all England. Good start by them. Cockrell must find his man. He goes to Grucock again. Two-handed catch, so the backs have got to stay back ten. England trying to roll it off the side of the wall. Come back now to the left side. They've got a bit of penetration. Driving through. Well into the 22. To Glanville. He sets it up. And it's a scrum to England. The pile-up, it wasn't coming. It's all England, John. It really is. Big forward pack driving forward. Not a lot of gaps appearing, but they'll come later. The big heavy men must do the hard work first. There's the tight five, an average of 17 stone four against 17 13 for England. Back to the left comes Perry. Luger coming in. Set it up. England should have it. They do. Cockerell taking it on after Vickery. And England have another scrum in front of the post. Both sides wide open for attack. Perfect place for a scrum, isn't it? Loads of room to the left and to the right. Easier to go with the grain, of course. Go to the right. The last scrum is a set piece. Cockerell just uh, having lost a boot, nothing wrong with him. It's a great start though, isn't it, John, by England? They've gone very well so far, but they'll be looking for some reward for it. I get the feeling that uh, the first points could be vital. Yes, you've got to admire the discipline of the All Blacks. Under the clutch a little bit here, but giving no penalties away. Dawson, who had such a terrific game. Delalio drags Cronfelt just an extra couple of meters. And we still have it. But they flashed Martin Johnson ahead of the man who was carrying the ball. Accidental offside scrum to the All Blacks. It's not technical, the referee's right. Can't bang into the man in front of you, that's what he's saying. Accidental offside, relieving scrum from the All Blacks. Oh, and Marshall. But he's penalised Dawson. Dawson doesn't like it. Yeah, he's, he's done it for kicking the ball out. It wasn't for being offside, but he's not allowed to kick it. That's what's coming up his right. Ball, it's going to be scrum. Dawson over eager. A message for Philip Townsend. Could he please go to the inquiry office to meet his father immediately? Anton Oliver. His father was an all black too, Frank Oliver, back in the 70s. Oh, and Grupop getting up there, disrupting the throw, and that meant Richard Hill could come up with it. So England have won one against. Wilkinson spins off, offloads to Guscott. Back it comes quickly. Again, there's an all black. Payne oh. Randall, the captain, just taking time to get back. England are offside. But the all blacks, as they so often do, slow to get back and just slowing up the England possession. Good play by Johnny Wilkinson with a little break. Spun out of the tackle. Loaded to Guscott, he's been in the game already. This is it. Guscott going through. Is it high? Referee says no. And the Blacks, as you say, John, so good at snuffing that ball that came out on their side. Oliver with the throw again. In comes Randall from the scrum half position to, to lift. And again, the All Blacks almost lost control of that one. Mertens puts it high and wide. That's uh, Lomu coming through on Perry. Perry very cleverly ducked under Lomu, or perhaps it was uh, a sixth sense that something was about to really take him to pieces. 
Scott trying to get the charge down. And a very, very good kick from Mertens. Matt Perry, I think he saw a giant shadow coming towards him, didn't he? And just ducked under Lomu. Good kick from Dawson, but straight to Mertens, who put it straight back with interest. outside him sometimes think he doesn't get the best out of them but he can kick a ball he kicks it well born in South Africa but very much a New Zealand where his father Terry played for the junior All Blacks and his grandfather played for the All Blacks right back in the 20s oh and England going astray Tane Randall coming up with that as Cockrell missed his man Penalty to the All Blacks. England not getting away from the ball after the tackle. Silly penalty, Jason Leonard. All Blacks showed great discipline when they were under pressure. First time England under pressure, they give away a penalty. There it is, you've got to roll away, you've got to make an effort to roll away. Sam Randall dealing with the old New Zealand rookie, quite legal. And this direct results of England making a mistake two mistakes so far on the line out Cockerell had a very torrid time with his uh, line out throwing in the two warm up games against the Allied Dunbar All-Stars 15 it was very good against Italy but of course there wasn't too much pressure against Italy the time didn't go didn't matter against the FDR it matters here Mertens Straight through the middle, and coming up to 12 minutes gone, New Zealand take the lead, 3-0. Penalty to New Zealand, it's it's New Zealand isn't it? 10, to the cosh all the way through. Benny Clyde with three points there in the lead. Field with uh, just uh, replacement cup is being treated at the moment. Martin Corrie, uh, Martin Corrie is on six, for him. Corey packing down at number eight with Delalio coming across the blind side. <laughs> to Glanville, good pass to. Uh, Dan Luger, but uh, well read by the All Blacks who wrapped him up. England still have it. Well, they don't because he didn't get the ball down. And the referee ruling it was a ball, so the All Blacks have to put in. Damien Hopley down by the tunnel. What news of Richard Hill? John, just a cut above the uh, left eye, looks like it should require a couple of stitches. Martin Corrion at number eight and Lawrence Daly also moving to blindside to replace Richard Hill. The scrum just uh, turning around. Marshall to feed and Mr. Marshall wants it reset. Under pressure on this side of the scrum. 
Well, England have got a free kick out of it. And indeed, you're absolutely right, Steve. That was uh, Dowd who was penalised. Corey sets it up. Maxwell offside round the side. You can see that straight away. But in fact, he's done them for going down. Two penalties there. That's, uh, in fact, Reuben Thorne, who's been done for going over the top and wrapping up the ball to stop it coming back. First penalty in the scrum, Craig Dowd, good player, but he's not normally on that side of the scrum, he's normally a loose head. Here he's playing tighter, this is the second penalty. For once, New Zealand discipline, there's Maxwell. You see him there, flopping over the top, it's not allowed. Johnny Wilkinson, the youngest ever player to 100 points in international rugby. And then he topped that with a, an English record of 32 points against Italy last weekend. And England expect they need him to be on cracking ball today. Every chance has to be taken. Struck beautifully, but he's missed it on the left post. Hit it really well, but just off target. Good kick for a left footer, long side of the pitch for him, just didn't quite draw it in enough. Mertens now with the drop. Out. 15 minutes gone, just come out to 16. mistake from England, they have to come all the way back, well into their own half. In some ways he's a bit unlucky, but why risk it? Bouncing in field. to Lomu, again steamrollers straight through to Glanville, but the second man got him, now the space is Cullen, Umaga, Luger, well was it a try, yes it was, Didier Mene is quite happy that that pass didn't go forward, try to Wilson, scored by Wilson, made by Lomu, look at this, Cullen's free, once he's free, it's real danger, they've got great runners all over the place now. Was it forward? I don't think so, I think the decision was right, it was out the back door. That's Lobo, he makes it, look at the glance for he just can't stop him. Takes out three men, always does. The first real try to New Zealand. Feel of the ball for Jonah Lobo, and just bringing in those all-important defenders to create that space wide out. Jeff Wilson scores his 34th try, second in the all-time list of try scorers for New Zealand, behind John Kerwin, and closing in. Burton's with the kick. Oh, it's a gem. Through the middle it goes, from the wrong touchline for him too, and suddenly England know they're up against it, 10-0, New, New Zealand lead. That's the thing about these Kiwi bats, you can't afford to miss one tackle. If you do, they'll punish you, as they did there. And there you can see from the overhead, that pass was clearly not forward. 19, Martin Corrie. The three called it right. Big score for the All Blacks. 10-0, 18 minutes gone, and again, Lomo the destroyer. Oliver hauled down by Johnson and Delalio. No touch this time, Perry. Good kick, he could get underneath that. Yes, goes up. Knocked forward by Mertens. Well done by Matt Perry. Was well done, no room to manoeuvre there. 
Richard Hill's back on the need him back and firing. Dawson, Wilkinson, wide to Gascott. Put it high again, they've got to get underneath that. Back it comes the England way. But England penalised for taking a man out without the ball. Yeah, that was silly, it was a good kick. Under real pressure. Now the penalty relieves it. Lovely kick. Yeah, it was Perry, in fact. Uh, went beyond the ball, the referee ruling that he wasn't going for it. Court, 10 nil behind. And we go into the second quarter of the game. Maxwell. It's going to the All Blacks trying to get the drive on, regrouping. England gets the ball carrier and knock him down. That's the outside of uh, Merton's boot, and that goes directly into touch. So England have a line out just outside the All Blacks 22. Well, I can see that. Didn't play well last week actually against Tonga. You wouldn't believe they were 10 0 up, would you? John Hart looking as if he's got all the cares in the world. Johnson. Maybe it was touch up in there, that didn't look too straight either. And uh, Dawson just taking his eye off it. mistakes at the highest level do get punished well they've relinquished in effect a very good attacking position <laughs> Justin Marshall Mertens well he didn't find touch but that's what he was going for Austin Healy getting himself into trouble Perry Cannot afford to hang around. A little knock forward by England first, so he's pulling them back for the scrum. But England getting themselves into awful trouble then, Steve. So he did. The pace of this New Zealand back line, you can't really run the ball back at them. Tom just tried hard last summer to get through the All Black defence, couldn't do it. It's pretty solid to me. And look at the All Blacks lined up behind the scrum. They're all in one line behind the other. They've all gone to the left. Wilson. Scrum down to the All Blacks. They were the All Blacks, all the Blacks, single file, one behind the other, down the middle of the field, so that they could go either way. That's nice to see. It's a move by the centres, that one, actually, Jen. I think we did it two decades ago, but it still works. It, uh, out to Justin Marshall. He's wrapped up in the tackle. And the penalty held on. He was isolated. England did well. Quickly taken by Austin Healy. Richard Hill. Delalio, as ever. Cockerell. Good ball for England, now they've got a bit of space, Wilkinson chipping it through behind Umanga, Guscott's getting up to him, and Umanga races into touch. Good chasing by Guscott, Put on a hard miss as well, Guscott not only a great try scorer, a good vision by Wilkinson, kicked in behind them, wanted to keep it in play, it as well in the end, but Guscott, good chasing. Good position for England. They're throwing the line out. We really need a score here to get back into this game. Delalio. Jason Leonard making decent ground. It's coming back England's way. Wilkinson. He goes to Glanville. But a penalty to England. 
from the line out. In fact, that was for pulling down Delalio before he came down from his jump. We need the points. We need to get some scores on the board. And Wilkinson signals to the referee that he's going to go for goal. It's not an easy one, though, is it? Left footed wrong side of the field for him. Here's the penalty. Delalio being pulled down. There you see it, not allowed to come to ground. Can be dangerous if he's tackled up there, that's the reason for that law. Johnny Wilkerson, he missed his first one. a distance and again he's missed it on the left post not easy pressure kick for Wilkinson he's had two missed them both England now desperate for points on the board 10-0 25 minutes gone Guscott to Perry and a black wall comes towards him no way through it. And sets it up and England have it. Gascott puts it high. Healy timing his run to catch Wilson as he comes down. Lobu fights two off. Neil back. Goes in to make the tackle. Justin Marshall chips it. Well, there's no Lobu out there this time. He's still at the bottom of the run. Dawson, trying to find space. Cockrell's there, but he hasn't got much support. And England have it again. Wilkinson puts it high. Richard Hill underneath it. Cullen steps out of a tackle, but not the second one. Delalio gets him. So it was Hill. Neil back trying to wrap up the tackle and England have it Delalio, Luger offside though the All Blacks and the penalty again to England a lot of ball but a lot of way they've got to the All Blacks defence is just too good it's too tight they're forcing England to kick at the moment and this is what you call a pressure kick Did well, stepped it back and come and pinched it. He's in the side in the midfield. Well, this the easiest kick that uh, Wilkinson has attempted so far. He's just going to put those other two out of his mind. No real angle this time at all. feel better hit it well straight away he was bending down to pick up his kicking tee he knew it was over from the moment he struck it and England had points on the board New Zealand 10 England 3 well done Wilkinson that was real pressure for a young lad Dawson underneath it. Richard Hill. Snapple there, beautifully done. The All Blacks have it. Tane Rendell comes away. That was great work, in fact, by Craig Dow. Oh, and hooked on by Yeremia. A very welcome sight for English <laughs> players and fans alike. There's a big overlap there on the left. He's been taking that. That was Richard Hill, he laid it back well. Ray Dow did well as well, that's legal, that's okay. Yeah, getting in there before the rapid four. And he's on his feet, so he's allowed to do it. 
It's not so good. Relief to English eyes, that one, I'll tell you. Alama Yeremia played protest for Samoa before he changed to the black shirt. In fact, he played one test for Samoa against the All Blacks. There is Craig Dowd, he's going to uh, need treatment for a head wound. Boy coming on is Greg Feek. Customer. Replacement for New Zealand, number 21, Greg Played very Feek well uh, number three, Greg in Pretoria Feek. against South Africa in August. Adventurous type feet, and this amongst his hobbies, sky surfing. Delalio comes in, sets it up. Jason Leonard tidies it up, makes it better ball. Lovely kick from Wilkinson. That's a good one. Up to the old Lex 10 meter line. Great kick and a good pass from Dawson. He put it onto his left foot, put it onto his left side, made it easy for Wilkinson. Spiraled it in. There's Matt Dawson. Good combination. This Tane Randall, the All Blacks captain. Well, he looked as if he had to lean back to get that. Yes, the referees picked it up. It wasn't straight. England had the scrum. Penalise one side, you've got to penalise the other. Quite right, not straight. Feek off, down, back on. New Zealand, number 21, Greg Feek, replaced by number 3, Craig Dowd. Lalio, Dawson. Gascott rescues it and wriggles his way through a couple. Delalio, Johnson. Wilkinson, Richard Hill. And they're finding it hard to make inroads that very, very tight. Delalio again hauled down this time by Reuben Thorne. Vickery, big man, but he gets nowhere. And England, if anything, going backwards. They're recycling and recycling, but they're not making any impression at the moment. The Glanville forced back fully five metres. Now they've been turned over, the All Blacks coming up with the ball. Randall, Yeremia, back pulls him down. Wilkinson goes in. It's open play, no offside. Cullen, this is where he's so dangerous, gets the pass away. And a knock forward by Yeremia. By Umanga. Ball, they look far more dangerous, don't they? There's a knock on. <laughs> we'll some follow through anyway. All right, quite legal. Well, a couple of mistakes by the all blacks back, so England could be in more trouble. But what was worrying for England there, Steve, is they didn't appear to be getting anywhere at all as they tried to attack close. It ended up going backwards and losing the ball. A lot of ball, but it's slow ball, isn't it? It's a big. Black wall, there's Phil Vickery, he had a go. So he's paying the price for it as well. And the narrows, four by England, three by New Zealand. 33 minutes gone. Penalty to New Zealand. Well, I'm not sure what it was for. So long ago, John, we probably forgot. Off the top from Reuben Thorne. 
Haaland from deep. And he was in touch. Good tackling from England on that occasion. But as you said, Steve, you always feel that there's a danger of the All Blacks breaking through. And we're not really seeing that from England. Due to these people like Cullen, so elusive, did well there, Dawson. And he has run around Jason Leonard. It's a long way around that, isn't it? England with the throw. Ooh, again, it wasn't straight. Poor throw, and England give up possession. Nowhere near straight, was it? Cockrell knows it, shaking his head as he goes into the scrum. Marshall feeds Mertens. Up goes the big kick, and the big man is out there and underneath it. Perry against Lomu. It goes back the All Blacks way. Tane Randall. Into the 22, Anton Oliver. Blacks really piling on the pressure here. And it's a penalty. England clinging on. For dear life. All Blacks looking very, very dangerous when they get the ball in hand. And they're going for goal. Big forward drive this from the All Black pack. That was the end of it. England all over it. Neil back seven. Lying over the ball. Marshall right on the spot. Should be an easy three points. That's what Neil Back got for his troubles. Two from two so far for Mertens. But this is a pretty simple one. I should be very surprised if he misses it. Pulls it through the post, over it goes. 13-3, New Zealand lead. And still no emotion at all New from John Zealand Hart, the New Zealand coach. Andrew He's a hard man to please, isn't he? Well, so far, when it comes to actually gaining the hard yards, the New Zealand forwards are actually doing better than England. Great tackle from Delalio, turned Kronfeldt, as clean as a whistle, had to be a penalty. That was great work from Delalio. Terrific. Delalio followed through well, Kronfeldt, big man, he's having a whinge. And Delalio, that's what they have to do, reply straight away. That was the kick-off, that's the wrap-up and the turnaround. Terrific technique, good play. Well, for all his uh, problems off the field, Lawrence Delalio seems to have come through them, a stronger and better player for it. it. Really has been a tower of strength since coming back into the England squad. One from three so far for Wilkinson. This just to the left of the posts. Over it goes. Two penalties to each side now, but still that converted try for New Zealand separating them. 13 6, New Zealand lead. England, scored by number 10, Johnny Wilkinson. Had to do it, had to reply straight away. Woodward knows that better than anybody really they need a try to bring them back into it I think that's what Clive Woodward will be most worried about haven't really looked like breaking through Luga big tackle on him again pumped back no longer possession well. Dawson puts it up Umanga underneath it 
Brought down. Owen Marshall knocks on. Neil back, trying to wrap it up, waiting for advantage. Now there is no sending Wilson. Play well, just in Marshall. Didn't play well last Sunday. A couple of errors here. That's just basic. Don't often see that from New Zealand player. He's got more troubles with that head wound. They're going to have to get him off and get it dressed properly. On comes Feek again. And Josh Kronfeld is the man on the ground there with a bit of ankle trouble. Ooh, and that's a new gash. That's a big one. Absolutely. It's a six, seven stitch job. That is, I'll tell you. Delalio makes the hard yards this time. Richard Hill, Wilkinson, and England getting their support now. Now a bit of space out on the left. The Glanville trying to go through, again not finding a way. Back inside, Perry, lovely little pass to Gascott, but it was forward. The crowd don't like it, the referee was right on the spot. But for a moment there, it looked as if Jerry Gascott had found a little way through. Almost through. Close, wasn't it? Close call. Refuse was on the spot, that's what you can say. It's a hard game, isn't it? You don't often see New Zealanders go down injured, but there's three or four of them down. It's been a tough start. Norman Maxwell back on his feet. Not very big for a second row. He's tall, six foot six, but he's under 16 stone. Nowadays, isn't he? <laughs> he made a huge impact in the Super 12s this season, and he's keeping out Ian Jones, so he has to be useful. Into injury time now at the end of the first half. Marshall Mertens chip through. It was knocked on, it touched another player. For a moment I thought that uh, Lomu had regathered before it hit the ground and then of course he'd have been okay and away. So I there. That's the knock on. The three was right. Well, we knocked it on first, came off the shoulder, back to him. side of the scrum. That was a real mess. Delalio, Johnson, quick ball for England this time. Now there's a bit of space, Gus Gott. Oh, that's a shocking pass and the whole move loses all its momentum. Up come the All Blacks with the ball. They came in from the side though so England had the penalty. Lucky. Scott. All Blacks were once losing their discipline. Had a bit of space out here. Good enough to see that from Guscott. I think it was actually meant for Perry, and Perry sensibly realised he couldn't get to it and let it go. Wilkinson is going for goal. Big kick this one. Just about 50 metres with the angle. The point in this game is so precious. Just close the gap right on half time. We'll be happy with that. Well, he's kicked the last two after missing his first two attempts at goal. Josh Kronfeld. the distance but again he's wide of that left post vector very wide and the referee says that's it half time advantage New Zealand they lead 13 points to six
Clive Woodward with a bit of talking to do. The All Blacks then a converted try to the good. A very intense 40 minutes. We'll be back with the views of England's Will Carling and Jeff Cook. Former skipper Sean Fitzpatrick. He's in the All Blacks corner. New Zealand at halftime here at Twickenham. Let's get the halftime thoughts of the wise three men here. You first of all, Will Carling. I wouldn't call myself wise, but I'm concerned. Um, New Zealand haven't had a lot of ball, but what I find worrying is the ease with which they found holes and gaps in the England defence um, when they have had it. And, you know, that doesn't bode well for us. Mm. Jeff, what are your thoughts? Well, it was a difficult half for England. They, they attacked a lot with ball in hand at first, but then they resorted to kicking. I haven't seen them kick so much in the last few games they've played, and some fairly hopeful kicks, I have to say. Sean, uh, that's because the All Blacks have made England kick. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly happy. I think we've... You look we've, it, actually. We've, yeah. Well, it's, it's a long way to go yet, and, uh, but I think they've, they've done the simple things well. They've, they've really put England under pressure, and uh, especially when England's had the ball. Um, They've put them under extreme pressure and forced mistakes. You look at Cockrell's line. England put you under the cosh early on, and there was no way through from the English point of view. No, that's you know. I think England had to score early on, and especially in this period of play where they where they attacked us for 15 minutes probably. We defended well and uh, and got out of trouble through uh, just doing the simple things well. There we go. And uh, but I don't think England's been under this sort of pressure for for a number of years when they've had the ball in hand, being knocked over by big tackles and cleaned out and there's no way through at the moment they've got to devise different plans of getting over the advantage line what is the way to break through them will for england i think they've just got to keep going either keep going at the number 10 channel and recycling the ball quickly and just and keep going and then maybe going through the middle of the forwards but uh, it's variety i think as jeff said they put in one or two hopeful kicks and new zealand back three aren't uh, aren't too bad and mm. you know that i don't think they're going to get very far like that New Zealand, Jeff manufactured a brilliant try, didn't they? Yes, it was. I mean, they just had a glimpse of their pace and power, but, but good play. They brought off the top of the line out. They bring Lomo in to midfield, first of all. He attracts three or four players. Quick recycle. A super play by Mertens here. He just lost his man. Put them into space. Yamanga nearly there, but uh, Wilson just popped up for yet another try for him. Uh, it was a great score. Mertens, rather than Lomo, for you, made that try. Well... No, I think uh, I think I think Lomu actually <laughs> he had a bit to do with it. Didn't exactly he, but... what Jeff said. He sucked a number of defenders, but a, a, bloody, a beautiful feint of hand by by Mertens was was superb and put you know put us away down the side there. Just a final word from you about Johnny Wilkinson kicking a bit awry. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on him. It's what Sean said. When you're under physical pressure and they're taking hits, puts you off your game slightly, and, it, and his kicking hasn't been as accurate as it, as it's been in the build-up. Okay, thanks all three. Second half. Coming up for you, more following very soon. And Will, you've got a point to make about the line-outs before the second half? Yeah, it's interesting that me making a point sitting alongside Sean, I think that was quite good. Um, I just think... What's he know about it anyway? Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. He was always reffing them. Um, they've got to make sure they're absolutely on the button. I think we've had two not straights and one that, that we've lost. And when holding on to possession is so crucial for us, denying them the ball, we really have got to focus in on those and make sure they're, they're top-notch. Just a final word from you, Jeff. Has the occasion got to Johnny Wilkinson a bit? No, I don't think so. I think his first two kicks that he missed were very difficult. And in fact, the second one, I thought he didn't really want to take it. England might have been better advised to go in the corner there. But uh, anyway, he's back on track now, I think, with uh, two centre field kicks that's given him more confidence. Can England get back? Oh, they certainly can. I think they're still anybody's game. But uh, the next score could be vital. I've heard someone say that before. <laughs> <laughs> Righto, let's go back to our commentators. To Steve Smith and to John Taylor. Well, some statistics from that first half. Just been looking at it during half time. New Zealand only won the ball in the England 22 twice to England's 12. But they turned one of those into a score. And England only conceded two penalties in their own half. And both of those became scores. Luger turned over there by Kronfeldt, but uh, he's got the ball back on the correct side. Back it comes, Wilkinson. Doesn't hit that one very well, but it goes into touch. That's a rough break. He did that as well, because uh, you don't want to kick badly to the back three of New Zealand, because they will punish you. Yes, yeah, so Umanga was ready to pounce on that one Vickery, Delalio behind him, there's Big Martin Johnson can they get to the all black throw? well it didn't go to the man intended but New Zealand come up with it 
to Cockrell on the floor well in fact he's turning a ruck back into a, a ball effectively by handling in there so uh, absolutely correct a silly mistake yeah, it was coming back anyway wasn't it he didn't have to touch it and that's right on the centre spot that fancies it so far Andrew Mertens two penalties in the conversion well he's certainly got the distance over it goes and England punished again they are so clinical out there you just cannot make a mistake if Mertens ain't kicking the goals the runners are running in the tries Woodward, I think we'll be Penalty discussing with that, that's, that uh, that's, that's three and points gifted, as you said Steve, it was coming back, he didn't need to do it. Right down, Healy's throat, Penny. But the ball came loose and uh, I think it was Dow got in there and got a hand to it. Marshall Marshall was holding on a bit there after he was tackled but he's got away with it Mertens chips in behind Healy and uh, an all black throw on the 22 I think uh, Healy can hear the giant strides of size 15 Jonah Lumbu boots behind him here from up here, couldn't we? But it wasn't a great kick, I've got to say. It's a real case of lomophobia. Ball. Tane Randall. Everybody running off him, and he held on and just got the chance to go himself. And Mertens. The room wasn't there, but it could still work for them. Well done by uh, Luger. Picked that up beautifully. England had the scrub. That's a good play by the Glanville and Luger. The Glanville charged the kick down. Burton just waiting for it. Right behind the sticks. It was quite an easy one for him. The Glanville charge it down. And Luger does well here. If he misses this one, it's dangerous. He does well. with Dawson we are waiting actually for Norman Maxwell to do up his boot laces this is not the start England wanted John as Jeff Cook said the next score was crucial England now need to score twice it's not easy against New Zealand Badly need a try psychologically as well as anything else. Vickery trundles forward. It's more like it. Maxwell is coming up offside, but uh, Dawson putting the ball high. De Glanville steaming after it. Umanga 
Very good under the high ball. Randall on hand as ever to support. Penalty for hauling him back into the uh, into the run. Rukov, the offender. And again, it's silly. He didn't work to give the chance. No need, let him have it. No point in doing it. Discipline going awry. And Merton's again fancying his chances. Well, England only conceded two penalties in their own half in the whole of the first half. It's now up to four. And we've had just six minutes coming up to seven in the second half. This one again, about 50 metres with the angle. But we know that uh, Mertens is well capable from the last kick of hitting this sort of distance. Again, he's long enough. And he's missed it. Wide of the left post. Thank goodness, say England. He is fallible. He's not perfect after all. Absolutely. Very important miss that, as I said before, every point in this game is precious. Wilkinson drops out Lomu, the man underneath it. I'm not so sure that's a really good idea. But he's popped up the ball, so now it is to Glanville. Can't get past Wilson, but he's made good ground and lots of space out left. Neil back, he's on his own. Sets it up beautifully. Now England have got a real chance. Guscott, that didn't go forward. Johnson. Wilkinson. Runs into the brick wall of Wilson and Yeremia. Guscott, little chip and go. Puts it through for Perry. It's a try. It has to be. He can actually touch it down against the football post. It was a messy one, but England don't care. That's what they need. And it's Phil de Glambo, who has put England back into this game. Game on, Phil de Glambo. Score had to come. And a massive overlap on the, overlap on the left. They ignored it. Gus got lovely chip through. Good chasing by Perry off the post. See, that's allowed, that's legal. That's actually a try right there. On the line or against the foot of the post. Which you could still say England haven't technically crossed the line, have they? But the try counts. Wilkinson. This is all the kicks were from that position and a different face on this game suddenly New Zealand 16 England 13 great angle here see just got lovely chip through Perry's onside does the right thing keeps the ball alive Phil de Glamble follows through and scores it Johnny Wilkinson you got to say New Zealand a touch unlucky if it hadn't hit the post Umango would have got to the ball first without any problems happy man Phil de Glanville his eighth try for England and he took over from Will Carling as skipper and he lost his place now back in the starting lineup. there's a bit of insane here wasn't he Phil de Glanville was all the bits and pieces so important in this England back line. I know quite Clive Woodward racing very highly. There's Craig Dowd. Well, he's certainly been in the wars. Real old campaigner. He'll remember his 50th cap. And uh, England penalised. He's going to go for goal again. Yes, he is. Half an hour to go. Mr. 
it again on the left post. He just hooked it across too far. Even Mertens feels pressure. Austin Healy. There's uh, John Hart. Pushes it straight down the middle to Mertens. Hoist it high. Perry marks it. Took it well, takes it very quickly. Finds a good touch. That'll do. Certainly will. Great catch. Made the mark. Tapped it himself. And must have made 60, 70 metres. That was the mark. Clever thinking now. Just tapped it to himself very quickly. Sees the space. Perry so far has done very well indeed. I know a few people thought he might be a bit of a weak link when it came to the big matches under pressure. But he's done very well today. Wilkinson will go for goal. Lawrence uh, Delalio just congratulating the skipper, Martin Johnson. Look how he got those big paws through and grabbed that ball. Yeah, you hate it when he's playing for Leicester, but you love it when he's playing for England. He does it all the time, Johnson is a terrific work rate. Replacement for England number 21, Darren Garfield. Coming on for number three, Phil Vickery. Garforth on for Vickery. Vickery took that heavy bang in the first half and I think he's still feeling it. And he's got a few cuts around the head as well. Well, the England scrummaging certainly won't suffer. Down Garforth. He used to own a scaffolding company. So he called himself a tubular executive. One of those kicks from out on the left that he's had a bit of difficulty with today. But that one's through the middle. It had to go over, and it has. And England are level again, 16 all. Well, they were dead and buried 10 minutes ago. It's all changed now. Woodward knows that, the crowd knows it. <laughs> what a fantastic game. Johnny Wilkinson. Well, a big swing of the pendulum, and if England can cut out the mistakes and take the game now to New Zealand, it could spring the first major surprise. But Matt Dawson adding his little bit of weight there into the back of the ball. England uh, looking to roll it off the side. Garforth into the action straight away. Wilkinson. The Glanville skipping through again. He's having a game and a half. Well, that was a penalty to England, really. He came in from the side. Oh, but going straight over the top. That was idiotic. I'm afraid that was Garfield. The ball was just coming England's way. And he got carried away. Went straight over the top. Flying over the top of the run. And uh, that was always going to be a penalty. Yes, it was stupid. Matt Dawson isn't happy. He thinks the penalty should have, should have been given to England earlier. You called it, John. We can see it up here. It's Garfield. That's stupid. to 
good jump. That was a great leap that he grew up. As always, Neil back. He does the tidying up. Now an England line out just inside their own half. Everybody's pumped up, aren't they? The players are certainly pumped up. There's the line outs on their own throw, pretty even at the moment. But they need this one, that's for sure. It's not really a very good average, though. Only just over 62%. Through the middle. Richard Hill that was steaming through. And the momentum with England. It's a slow ball. So Neil Bank just comes off the back of the, uh, the wall. Garforth goes to set it up. Back in with him. Wilkinson through the hands. A little knock on there. If the All Blacks don't come up with the ball, they'll have to scrum. They don't need it. Umanga. Three on two out wide. Gus got to Lomu. And he sees off Gus got Healy. Through, he's gone through Healy as well. And the big man's done it again. No wonder England hate the sight of Jonah Lomu. Once again, steamrolling over the England defence. First Gascot, then Healy. And everybody congratulating Jonah Lomu. Hooked up Jonah, isn't he? What a fantastic player. Gascot's got him here. No way, skips out of it. This now is in his stride, it now makes it so difficult. Healy has a go. He's squatted off. Dawson has a go. He's pushed off. Luger comes across. He's pushed off. What a player. What a try. Well, I think it uh, started off innocently enough. Um, Delalio, I don't think actually did anything to him until a couple of the All Blacks came in and his knee went into his face. The referee just talking to everybody and saying, calm it down, boys. Yes, he was accidental. Rally on the end was pushed into Lomu. Could he come in a bit 20 yards earlier? Well, I see. I was looking this morning, one of the spread betting firms had Lomu scoring a try after an hour. They're just about spot on, I think. 58, 59 minutes. Mertens with the conversion. New Zealand back in the lead. 21-16. And now it's 23-16. That seven-point lead restored. Just as it was all going England's way. Up comes the big man. Beautiful handling for the All Blacks. Great runners all over the park. And look at this for a score. As an Englishman, we don't enjoy it, but he's a great sight, isn't it? What a player. Six foot five, 18 and a half stone. The Glanville, though, going through the middle. Picked up by Hill. Clinging on to it, Neil back, wrapped up, manages to get the ball behind him though. Wilkinson chips through for Gus Scott. Oh, and it almost bounced into his arms, but it bounced just right for Jeff Wilson in the end, and he was able to clear. Luger. And England have got to start again. Wilkinson to Delalio. Healy, now is he going to take on Lomu? Cuts inside him. Wrapped up by Rendell. Good repost. Rodba into the action straight away, having come on. Rodba again. Scored two tries in the Five Nations. 
little chip through by Wilkinson. He's got to put it beyond Wilson, but he's got to that kick and therefore he's able to mark it. You need more height of all the players you don't want to kick to. One of them is Jeff Wilson. Great hands. England still deep in New Zealand territory. There's Rodba on for Danny Grucock. England replacement number 20, Tim Rodba, on for number 5, Danny Grucock. Well, Rodba showed some great form last season. He's struggled really to recapture it since then. But if ever England need a big game from him, it's now. So we won the game from Rubber we saw in South Africa five, six years ago when he had an outstanding game that day. Wonderful game in 94, in fact. Well, we'll look and see it, we'll John, we were there. That was from the back row, he's now into the second row. But he's a very, very athletic second row, so he gives England more attacking options. Throw didn't go quite as planned, but Dawson shakes off one, keeps it going. Rodba, his pass went astray. Dawson there again. Wilkinson, Guscott tries to wriggle outside. Perry, Dowd, he wasn't offside. Open play to Glanville. No way through there. That's a better ball. Guscott. Oh, I think he thought about a drop goal for a moment. Coming through was Kronfeldt, and he spoiled it, and the All Blacks suddenly with an overlap. Cullen going! A lot of people waiting for him to be called back, but Cullen's still going. Luger now gets to him. De Glanville picks up the loose ball. He's only found a manga. Wilson. his own kick comes up with it too and he's put Cullen away it's a little knock forward luckily for England Ooh, what a match how quick is Dan Luger there aren't many people can run down Christian Cullen that's uh, Byron Kelleher he's going to replace Justin Marshall at scrum half Wilkinson swapped again in midfield it was Hill but they're still going Rodba Cockerell oh and again there's an all black he's going to penalise him but Robin Brook he does that so well still advantage to England Austin Healy and in fact the referee are judging that there was no advantage because it would have been New Zealand's throw in the line out and he thinks that a better advantage for England is the penalty against Robin Brook for loitering with intent. He's been doing it for years and getting away with it for years. Not this time. Number 20, Royce Willis, replacing number 5, Robin Brook. And that's uh, Brook's last contribution to the game. A penalty to England. He's gone off and he's been replaced by Royce Willis. Johnny Wilkinson just... Uh, Calming himself down with a drop of liquid before setting up the kick that he hopes will bring England back to within four points. Attention, even showing through the St George's Cross. Absolutely right in front, he should have no problem with the distance. Oh, but he scuffed it. Hit that one horribly. 
slipped it appeared just as he went to kick it he wants his footing knows it 26 minutes gone in the second half charged down very very well by Cockerell but again Callan coming up with it and he's so cool on the ball quite happy to run out of defence well that was uh, definitely outside the 22 but he's found a great touch Lomu sprinting up after the ball to make sure England cannot take a quick line out. Oh, Jonah, doesn't he? He's the difference. The star of the last World Cup, and already three tries in this one. Dawson was slow with his kick there and England had to pay for it. Or oh, knocked on by Mertens, that's useful. England trying to turn them over, but they have the scrum in any case. Two mistakes, one by Dawson, one by Mertens. I think he was looking for the drop goal, he certainly took his eye off the ball. That looks to me like Daryl Gibson. Coming on for Yeremia. He was in the starting lineup until uh, Christian Cullen moved from the wing into centre. Free kick to England. Very quickly taken by Healy. Rodberg bashes his man off and sets it up. England looking a bit disorganised, but Luger just decides to pin his head back and go. Wilson has it, back to Amunga. So strong. Patton's pushing England back. That's where he wants the All Blacks to be playing their rugby now. Nice! Nice! Let's go! Right, again, a bit of aerial ping-pong, Amunga has it. Neil back there, hoping the ball's going to go dead because then they've got a scrum back from where it was kicked, but it's not going to. Touchdown, 22 dropout. Luger thought he was away, but you've never got as much time as you think with the All Blacks. And he was suddenly in trouble again. Garpel setting it up. England have it and the referee saying that's okay it was out and now suddenly over goes is it Gibson no it's Keller Byron Keller and that a try of England's making really bad mistakes by England I don't think they'll be happy that the referee ruled that ball was out but Byron Kelleher took full advantage was out, the referee was right. Hopkins Healy at scrum half. Dithered. Massive pressure from the All Blacks on the England scrum half. Wilkinson almost had him. Too elusive. This is the pressure on Healy. Kelleher just come on. Scores what's got to be the crucial try. Yes, it looks as if England will be going the long route now. Just uh, ten minutes to go. And New Zealand leading 28-16 with the conversion to come. He's a big fellow, Byron Keller. No wonder he was able to shake out of that tackle. He's almost 15 stones. And that is huge for a strong heart. Well, the looks of him next to me might have uh, reached those proportions when he wasn't training too well. And Mertens rubs salt into the wound. Great conversion, New Zealand 30, England 16. 
it's all about pressure. New Zealand put massive pressure on people. Look at that, the All Blacks forward going through. England not happy. They were wrong, the ball was out. Kelleher sniped it. And uh, England ringing the changes now. Phil Greening has come on to replace Cockerell at hooker. And uh, Paul Grayson has also come on to replace Johnny Wilkinson. Delalio downs his man. Cullen not uh, very happy with the kick, but he's found a touch. Paul Grayson, of course, plenty of experience. 256 points for England. Johnson. And another England move just peters out. Tane Randall. And a penalty to England. Quickly taken by Dawson. Reading in the wide open spaces. It was a great pass to him from Dawson. Grayson. Jerry Guscott. A black wall facing him. Johnson goes straight through it. Dawson sniping away, wriggling out of two tackles. Lays it back now. England got some momentum. Didn't go to Gascon. And a penalty against the All Blacks offside. Take it quickly, Dawson. Gets it wide, but the pass goes to absolutely nobody. Nobody was right to do it. It was just a terrible pass. It was a slight overlap. This is the first break. Lovely break from Dawson. He's so dangerous, so elusive. Eventually the ball comes back to him again from the penalty. And it was on. But it was a little knock-on from Gaston. He did touch it, so they were lucky to get away with that in any case. That pass. Yeah, I think he thought uh, Luger would stay on his wing and Luger would come off it. Just uh, run the clock down. About six minutes left on it. And uh, John Hart putting his feet up. Job done. done. Yeah, absolutely, John. But to me, the difference between the two sides really has been the All Blacks so clinical in the finishing, England not. Rudba, two handed catch. No, it was not forward, says the referee. Again, England losing shape. Didn't really know what was on there. We've got happy. It's a good game, hasn't he? Yeah, the referee saw it. He was right. There is ten of them. Far too many. Free kick again to England. They've got the edge of them in the scrum, but that's about the only place they have. Rodba, White to Luger. Cuts back inside and sets it up. Can they get quick ball wide where there's space? The Lalio can. Kicked up wonderfully by Perry. And holding on to the ball. The All Black so quick to get a hand in there. having a talk to do. Perry, lovely pick up. Sticking low move. Which is something you definitely do want to do. You don't run into him, that's for sure. That's the penalty.
Damien Hopley down in the tunnel. I should think it's a pretty glum England bench. Yeah, JT, far too many unforced errors have let New Zealand into this game. And England be disappointed. They really haven't given it their best shot this afternoon. And the New Zealand taken their chances very clinically. Line out uh, from the penalty to New Zealand. 30 points to 16. England got a draw last time they came to Twickenham. In 1997 it was 26 all. But they've been beaten today. Delalio. Neil back. That's a better ball. Delalio. But there's still a wave of black shirts. Set it up again. Healy taking over its come half. Grayson going nowhere. Back comes the ball again though. Delalio. Greening. The new slimline greening. Much more athletic. Not a handling area from uh, De Glanville, but it didn't go forward this time. Oh, diving through. That was uh, Craig Dow. Penalty to England. They take it very quickly. Gusket. Rodba. And uh, they weren't back 10, so England will get another go. That black wall spread out across the field, chipped through by Dawson. And, uh, who's got the throw? England have a line out right on the All Blacks line. Can they finish with a flourish? Nice kick from Dawson with the end, the force to kick. There is just no way through that black line. Maybe now. Reading must find his jumper. Well, he did, but uh, it was a bit scrappy. England trying to peel off. Slow again, stuck in there, they've just got to try and ride forward from the bottom. Dawson has it. Puts it wide. Well, I know my money would be on. Sometimes a good tactic, but there was Wilson and Lomu both alive to it. And the kick in any case went directly into touching goal. Wilson made a great player. Saw it coming. We haven't put too much on it anyway. But really, John, the force to kick, aren't they? There's just no way through this black line. Healy. Perry in midfield, but again, that line has already formed. Nowhere to go for Gascott. And it's a turnover. Ball was out, reading, not offside. Driving through Carl Hoft. Wilson, trouble again. Lomu out here on the left with room to move. Gets round Rodba. And Perry clings onto him with a little help from Delalio. And Delalio straight into get the ball. Penalty England. Well, they succeeded this time. But I'm afraid it's too late. Oh, I can't believe he's actually brought him down. Give us the sight. Unless, of course, you're wearing a white shirt. He did well. Clung on for dear life. Mertens. Cullen. He hoists it high. Perry. Greening. Cuts inside. Neil back on his shoulder as always. Oh, and again, they've given it away. New Zealand have the scrum. That's uh, Tony Brown, the replacement fly half for New Zealand. Played uh, a minute and 
minute of injury time and uh, Neil back with a nasty cut on the nose. He'll have to come off and have that treated and Martin Corrion for the second time in the game. Mertens has done his job and Tony Brown just coming on to uh, relieve him for the last few minutes. Battered bodies down there, John. Both teams have given their all, that's for sure. Well, disappointment for England. They got themselves right back into it at 16 all. But then uh, one super try from Lomu and a messy one, and they are back out of it again. And Lomu charging forward again to bring him into the areas round the scrum. That's where he's so dangerous. Tony Brown dummies and goes. Penalty England. He held on after the tackle. Lomu playing at number eight there. It's so big, we didn't even notice it, did we? That's where he started. In the back row as a school kid. Into touch it goes. Well, New Zealand are going to take a lot of beating, that's for sure. And England have got to go the hard route. Then they could meet them again in the final. Now it looks as if they'll uh, be going the playoff route. Well, very definitely, I would say. Off the top from Rodba. Grayson. Again, the England passing in midfield. Very, very stilted. Delalio. Greening. But his pass to Rodba was poor. Mr. Marshall, the Australian referee, blows the final whistle. And it's the same story for England. Yet again, a few opportunities. But in the end, New Zealand that much more assured, that much more clinical. They've taken the match 30 points to 16. And England have got to look at what might have been. They won't feel that they've done themselves full justice out there today. They know they can play better than that. But there was a certain jumpiness about the passing in the backs. They didn't look comfortable to have the ball in their hands. And the low move factor certainly came into play. There he is, the big man. All smiles for him. A great match. He was out of the starting lineup for the Tri-Nation series. Back into it now with a vengeance. And John Hart, the New Zealand coach, uh, will think that is a job very well done. They've just put down their marker, stamped their authority on this World Cup.